So how does a typical uh, meta-optical design project go? Well, it usually starts with a great idea or a concept that first has to be studied, if it's at all possible, and then turned into a set of specific uh, requirements for the engineer. At that moment, we can go into a ray tracing design where we look at the entire system, see which components are needed and how they interact with each other. This results from a set of system requirements to a set of component requirements. And at that moment, we can actually start the meta surface in earnest within the software solution. First, by building a library of nanostructures, uh, which are sub wavelengths. So we use full wave solvers for that. And then taking those structures into component design, replicating target wavefronts that came from the ray tracing design uh, to replicate those wavefronts. Finally, then once the designs are made, we can validate those both in software or porting them back into ray tracing solutions and generating fabrication files to be sent off to the foundry or to the lab. It's worthwhile before beginning to take a look and appreciate the scale and complexity that you need to cover when making a meta surface design project. On the one hand, we start at the tiniest scale sub wavelength for structures where we need a solution of Maxwell's equations using uh, full wave solvers like RCWA, FEM, or FTD. But these solvers are all limited to a couple of wavelengths in size. So once you get to even modest sizes, become computationally too expensive and more approximations are needed in the form of propagation optics. These work great on a single component level. Once we get to large scales, and large scales meaning both a couple of components <clears throat> as well as a couple of meters or centimeters in size, propagation optics starts to become too cumbersome. We have to go to ray tracing the time. Uh, first things first, with Meta Adams building the library, uh, there's a couple of algorithms uh, that, are, that are widely known, RCWA, FDT, FEM. Within PlanOpsim, we implement the RCWA algorithm. Uh, we've benchmarked it, and it turns out that for this set of problems, not for any problem, but for this set of problems, like this, the reference at a structure that you see on the right, the uh, RCWA solver turns out to be an order of magnitude faster than the TD uh, calculations, but while maintaining the same accuracy as initially, we have again calculated a reference structure with RCWA and FDT at the same level of convergence. We see that both the transmission and the phase calculation come out with essentially the same result as long as you uh, let both solvers converge. To their, uh, to their state. In component level, uh, like I said, we use RC, uh, we use propagation optics because this, it looks tiny if you on the ruler, it's only a couple of millimeters, but this is actually a huge component when you consider a full wave calculation, calculation. So some approximation is needed. We apply here the local periodic approximation where each rev meta atom is represented by its complex transmitted phase and amplitude, uh, which gives us the field distribution, which we can then transform using Fourier transforms, propagate, and construct the field at different locations projected away from the lens. This is known under a different, over, under several uh, different names, such as beam propagation method or Rayleigh-Sommerfeld diffraction. But essentially, uh, this is all propagation of I like to call it uh, that way. These methods are very fast because they rely on the fast Fourier transform. But with meta atoms, there is often still a limit that applies simply due to the number of meta atoms that you need in a millimeter. As size, you can still have 2,000 by 2,000 uh, meta atoms, so 4 million uh, meta atoms already. Another limitation that turns out to be in practice not so relevant is that it all only applies to homogeneous media of propagation. So you can use it to transfer from one lens surface. On to the next. And once we're transferring between different lens surfaces, we are at the system level and we can apply the well known ray tracing methods uh, that have been around for a long time. This also allows the designer to interface with mechanical engineering, uh, calculate for temperature stability, have a look at uh, tolerance uh, and assembly stability. This is called Monte Carlo ray tracing. There was a wise computer engineer that once told me 
Well, Monte Carlo simulations is what you do when nothing else works. Uh, this is the case here. This is the highest level of approximation uh, that's that's available. Well, the, what can I say? The highest level of extra abstraction, deepest level of uh, approximation uh, in optics, where you're just using geometrical rays, but it works wonders 